Thanks for tuning in today. I'm John Holmes of Holmes Hobbies and we're at the Hobby House and we're going to do a review on the brand new Sidewinder 4 from Castle Creations. We have a new product that just got released into the market from Castle Creations and it is the Sidewinder 4. It is a sensorless speed controller for about you know one tenth scale vehicles and they call it like seven pounds or something like that seven pound vehicles if you're looking for bashers and racers and stuff like that but since we're mostly interested in crawlers you can kind of throw the seven pound limitation out the window and assume that it's really just going to work in about any size crawler that you want now i've already done a little bit of work to this guy i took the fan off because we really don't need it on on here and uh, at this point i've also added these uh, we'll cut away to the shop show you the solder and work on that and come back here but essentially what's really important about this is that it is a low cost controller it has their newest startup and their newest hardware so it makes it really good for sensorless crawling and it's uh, just generally a pretty slick design so let's get into this a little bit now the uh, the new sidewinder 4 has been changed from the 3 in a couple of ways to reduce the cost and also increase the quality of it uh, primarily they got rid of the wires on one side so they just have bullet connectors here uh, directly soldered onto the board and that reduces their cost in uh, in that way and then they also have gotten rid of the sticker and they used a uh, silk screening on the case which is pretty sweet um, it looks really good it's uh, not going to scratch off like it does over time and uh, you can see here it's actually just a two-piece case now we'll try to take this apart I actually modified the case and cut out this section so that we could do this and show you here. So it's uh, just potted, it's waterproof, directly in this bottom case, same as a lot of their older products have been. And then pop this top on, and you have your mount for the fan that goes there. And again, I took the fan off already, just because we're not going to need it but that's a, a really nice thing of them to include. Now the fan does not get power directly from the ESC, but you plug it into your receiver. And so it, uh, it would be assumed that it powers by, you know, six volts or 7.4 volts. Now what I've done is added the XT60 plug on here. XT60 is what I prefer to use at this point. And then also added a lead here for whatever accessories we want to use. In my case, I'm going to be powering the SHV500 servo, which runs directly off of 12 volts. And this, uh, I should mention, is only 2S and 3S capable ESC. So as opposed to their new X series, like Mamba Max Pro, Mamba X, etc., those are all 6S compatible, so up to uh, 25 volts. This one's only good up to 3S or you know 12 volts, whatever you want to call it. Uh, six to eight cells nickel metal hydride, it says right here on the side, and two to three cells lipo that's kind of nice that they put the rating right on the side so there's no confusion but that's uh you know that's really about all we can say about the technical aspects without actually going out and crawling it so i think it's time to install it into a rig and go test it out we're back at the shop here gonna do some soldering work because i put on a set of leads here the xt60 plugs that i have been preferring and realized that ah, i forgot to put some power on from a servo so we're gonna fix that First, we need to desolder the plug that's already on there. And then we will add our heat shrink on and resolder. Already got our iron preheated here. The LF3500 from Zyatronic. Nice beefy one. I think it's maybe 250 watt, 350 watt. It's big. Slip our heat shrink on, then just reverse the order. Oh, actually, don't forget to put the wires through the heat shrink that you want heat shrunk, right? This is why we're having to redo it. Sometimes I forget stuff. Try not to burn yourself. That's usually the most important part of soldering, is trying not to burn yourself. A little hot. There we are. Always make sure to power down your soldering iron so you don't burn down your house. 
I've only had a few fires from leaving a soldering iron on. No big deal. Now we get to uh, put this heat shrink on. Trust the old Craftsman hot air gun we got here. I've had this thing since uh, I think about 2002. It's as old as this hat. There we are. Now she's done. We'll meet back over at the hobby house and install it in the rig. All right, we're outside getting ready to test the Sidewinder 4 in the TRX-4 with a revolver. I think it's the 1800 KV 540 size. Yes, indeed it is. And we're running on a three cell LiPo 1400 milliamp hour 35C pack, if you're interested. Boot up the radio first, it's always a good idea. Plug in our battery. Ready to go. Oh, so uh, forwards makes it go backwards. In this case, all we need to do is switch two of the phase wires. You can only do this on a sensorless motor. If you do this on a sensored motor, it's probably gonna smoke your ESC and or your motor. So just remember that, only on sensorless motors can you do that. All right, so we swap two wires. Just uh, tuck that switch back in on this horrendous wire job that we've got going. There we go. All right, so initial impressions compared to the Mamba XESC, we have just as good of startup control, but it seems to be a little quieter. A little different noise than the Mamba X. But certainly no lack of low speed control. And we are in first gear right now. Part of the low cost of the Sidewinder 4 is that it has a linear internal BEC. It really doesn't provide very much power. If you're running 2S LiPo, you can get away with about a 300 ounce inch torque servo. But if you're running 3S LiPo, you won't be able to get away with anything and you need to run an external BEC. This is a pretty tough climb. Gotta get just the right hook. There we are. Almost. Oh. Ha! Little throttle. That's why it's nice to have wheel speed. So, very controlled on the downhill, on the descent. get her bound down. Yeah, I would say every bit as controllable as the uh, Mamba X series. So they obviously just took that hardware and went with a sensorless design. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, quite, uh, quite controllable for sensorless. Pretty impressed at Castle's new lines of controllers on that. All right, we're gonna put this in second gear. So about the same wheel speed as anything else. Maybe you can hear the high speed. Ooh, boy, she, she sings. She sings at high speed, wow. And a lot of that is just my motor. Now let's uh, let's show you this drag brake. So I'm in second gear right now, so the drag brake is not going to be as strong. But it's certainly got pretty powerful drag brake. I uh, have it set at 30% and combined with this revolver motor. Man, that's a lot of drag brake. Going to first gear. <laughs> yeah, it's not even moving. We can, we can lift the rig up by the drag brake. That's impressive. So the, uh, what that tells us is that the on resistance of the ESC is very low. The resistance of the motor is very low. Also being a high pole count really helps that drag brake strength, but that's, that's a lot of drag at 30%. Uh, the other test that we can do, we're in first gear. I'm just going to put my foot on this rear tire. Let's see. Yeah. So for sensorless, that is torque. Not a problem. 
color me impressed just all around uh, if you're looking for a sensorless setup it looks like this uh, this new Sidewinder 4 is actually a really good choice. Not only does it have a lower cost than pretty much anything else out in the market that's sensorless, but it has far better low speed control than we've ever seen on a sensorless controller or just sensorless operation in general. So we're probably going to be making these into combos with our revolvers and the Sidewinder 4. Nice, uh, you know, budget choice if you want to go for brushless. You you want to be able to say go through water without worrying about things wearing out too fast, or if you're just looking for something a little bit lower cost, but you don't want to stay with the brush setup because of maintenance reasons, or or maybe you just want more power one way or the other. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good choice. So I would definitely give this two thumbs up for a new product from Castle, and looking forward to trying this out in some other vehicles as well. So thanks for tuning in today. Have a good one.